Hello YouTube, Mr. Patino here with another read aloud. We're going to finish reading Discovering Mars, The Amazing Story of the Red Planet by Melvin Berger. Today, this is going to be segment 6, pages 46 through 54, and we're going to be done with this book. Alright, be sure to like and subscribe and tell me which book I should read next. Here we go. Time Out for Mars. A, a year is the time it takes for a planet to make one trip around the sun. The length of the year depends on two things, the distance the planet must cover in one orbit and the speed of the moving planet. Planets further away from the sun have longer orbits than closer planets. Earth's orbit is 584 million miles long, but Mars orbit is 890 million miles. Earth also moves faster than Mars. Earth travels around the sun at a speed of 66,500 miles per hour. Mars goes only 54,000 miles per hour in its orbit. Not a good picture, sir. As you know, it takes Earth just over 365 days to make a complete orbit. Because of the longer journey and slower speeds, Mars only gets around once every 687 days. So a year on Mars is 680 days long. On Mars, a year is nearly twice as long as on Earth. But a Martian day is, little, is only a little longer than an Earth day. All planets spin and rotate as they orbit the Sun. A day is the time it takes for one complete rotation. It takes Earth 24 hours to make one complete rotation. Mars spins more slowly than Earth. The slower speed makes, makes a Mars day longer and, than an Earth day. It takes Mars 24 hours and 37 minutes to turn around completely. A view of sunset on Mars taken by Viking 1. Making Mars more like Earth. Terraforming was originally a word from science fiction. It means changing a planet to make it more like Earth. At first, all the ideas for terraforming Mars came from science fiction. One wild scheme was to start a nuclear reaction on Phobos or Deimos. The reaction would make the moon of Mars into a tiny sun. Its heat would pour down on the frozen planet. The heat would melt the frozen waters in the permafrost. The result would be flowing streams and ponds of fresh water. Another fanciful notion was to capture some of the ice that forms the rings of the planet Saturn. A powerful spaceship would then tow the ice to Mars. As the ice melted, it would provide water for the planet. Still others, still other writers considered exploding atom bombs in the volcanoes on Mars. This would send out hot gases that would create an atmosphere. The heat would warm the entire planet, melting all the frozen water. An artist picture of astronauts laying out materials to capture the sun's rays. Most recently, some serious scientists started thinking about terraforming Mars. One idea is to use immense mirrors to reflect and focus the sun's rays onto the surface of Mars. This would raise the temperature of the planet and melt the frozen water. The mirrors they have in mind are not the usual glass mirrors. Rather, they are thin, light, shiny plastic panels. The plastic is much lighter than glass. They can be made into mirrors as big as a half mile square. Suppose scientists succeeded in placing eight gigantic mirrors in orbit around Mars. The heat the mirrors would, would mirrors reflect would melt the permafrost. That would produce liquid water. It would also release water vapor. This gas would enter the air around Mars. It would help give it an atmosphere more like Earth's. At the time, the experts suggest using special plants to make Mars more livable. These plants are called blue-green algae. They are tiny plants with roots, stems, or leaves. They are tiny plants without roots, stems, or leaves. Blue-green algae are the only kinds of plants that grow around Earth's South Pole. You know that Mars has a climate somewhat like our South Pole. Perhaps the blue-green algae will also grow on Mars. Blue-green algae, like other plants, take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Mars is air, 
we said, has a lot of carbon dioxide and almost no oxygen. So lots of algae growing on Mars might change the balance. It might even produce enough oxygen to sustain human life. Finally, the scientists are thinking of using gases known as CFCs, or chlorofluorocarbons. On Earth, air conditioners and refrigerators use CFCs. Some of these gases leak into the atmosphere. They then destroy the ozone layer high above the Earth and expose humans to dangerous rays from outer space. But Mars doesn't have any ozones, so the CFCs would not do any harm there. The CFCs would allow the heat from the sun's light to warm the surface of Mars. They would not, they would not let the warmth escape back into space. The heat would build up and raise the temperature of Mars. Mars would become more like Earth. Scientists, believes, scientists believe it might take perhaps 100,000 years to change, of change to make Mars more like Earth. A Mars like Earth would be very different from the planet we know today. It might be more the way scientists think it was long ago. The planet would have lots of liquid water in rivers, lakes, and oceans. The atmosphere would be warm enough to allow living things to grow. The push to learn more about Mars continues. During the next century, the first astronauts will probably land on our neighbor in space. After that, others surely will follow. Mars could be a livable place for plants in perhaps 100 to 10,000 years. And perhaps it will have an atmosphere livable for humans. Even if it will be 100,000 years from now, the future is very exciting indeed. This image of Mars was taken by the Hubble telescope. Bluish clouds cover the icy North Pole. Cool. An artist's picture of astronauts exploring Phobos with Mars in the background. All right, we did it. We finished the book. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and listening. Discovering Mars, the amazing story of the red planet by Melvin Berger, read by me, Mr. Coutinho. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Comment, tell me which book I should read next. Bye.